Starship will likely be equipped with landing legs this year. No need for a complex Mechazilla catch. It will soon be able to land anywhere, on any terrain across the Earth. And that's exactly what SpaceX is aiming for with its upcoming military program on Johnston Island. More importantly, this is a key opportunity for Starship to develop its landing legs, preparing the HLS variant for Artemis 3 in 2027. So, how exactly will this unfold? And does this mean the Mechazilla landing method is getting scrapped? Let's dive in and find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. One of SpaceX's biggest goals this year is to catch Starship using Mechazilla. It's a game-changing plan that would make Starship instantly reusable, cut down turnaround time between launches, and most importantly, keep costs as low as possible. But here's the issue. If Starship depends on Mechazilla and ocean landings, it won't be able to fulfill the mission requirements of Artemis III in 2027, which demands a lunar landing or support military missions that rely on Starship for global cargo transport. And this issue became even more pressing in early March when the U.S. Air Force, USAF, unexpectedly posted a notice on the Federal Register, revealing plans to build two rocket landing sites on Johnston Island, a remote atoll about 800 miles from Hawaii. This marks the latest move in the Rocket Cargo Vanguard program, an ambitious project aimed at delivering military cargo anywhere on Earth in just 90 minutes using reusable rockets. No surprise here. The USAF has picked SpaceX's Starship for its cargo transport test program, formerly known as Rocket Cargo, and now rebranded as Point-to-Point -point Delivery, P2PD. With a payload capacity of over 100 tons, rapid development progress, and pinpoint landing capabilities, Starship checks all the boxes. In 2022, SpaceX secured a $102 million contract to develop and demonstrate the necessary tech making Starship the top choice for the Department of Defense's Advanced Logistics Initiative. If a private company can prove it has a cost-effective, reusable rocket for rapid cargo delivery, the Pentagon could sign long-term contracts for such a service. Meanwhile, SpaceX also has a solid history with the Department of Defense, from launching GPS satellites in 2016 to securing a major role in the NSSL Phase II program in 2020. More recently, the Pentagon has turned to SpaceX for military Starlink services, including contracts for Ukraine in 2022 and global operations in 2023. So, Starship is arguably the best option for rocket cargo Vanguard and is highly likely to become a leading contender. That sounds great, but there's one big question, but what will the program require Starship to do? Well, the program will test landing and ground handling to see if it meets real-world needs like disaster relief fast military deployments, and emergency supply transport to frontline bases. However, building a Mechazilla on the island isn't feasible, and landing at sea would mean towing Starship back to shore, causing delays. The most practical solution? Give Starship landing legs. SpaceX has already mastered this with Falcon 9, and even designed Falcon Heavy with the capability in mind. Landing legs enable rockets to touch down on solid ground or drone ships, making rapid reuse a reality. This landing method has been so successful that Elon Musk recently took to X to celebrate a major milestone. He proudly shared, Congratulations, SpaceX team, on 400 landings of Falcon 9. In fact, during past test flights like SN5 and SN6 in 2020, SpaceX equipped Starship with six compact landing legs tucked inside the skirt. These legs folded during launch and deployed for landing. However, after touchdown, they bent and suffered damage. Later prototypes like SN9 and SN10 faced similar issues, even with upgraded legs. These failures highlighted that the landing leg design wasn't stable enough for rapid reuse. As a result, SpaceX gradually moved away from landing legs opting instead for ocean splashdowns and Mechazilla tower landings. This shift reduced Starship's weight while improving reusability and minimizing post-flight repairs. Of course, we can't deny that landing legs offer plenty of advantages. They're also a key part of SpaceX's long-term vision. Elon Musk has always emphasized that for Starship to land on the Moon, Mars, and beyond, it needs a reliable landing system. Unlike the controlled landing zones on Earth, extraterrestrial surfaces are unpredictable, 
rocky, uneven, and full of cracks. In these environments, landing legs aren't just an option, they're a necessity. Elon Musk made this pretty clear back in 2023. When SpaceX posted a clip of Falcon Heavy's boosters landing in sync, he jumped in with, and that's how we will land on Mars. It wasn't just a cool comment. It was a hint at SpaceX's bigger vision and a reminder of why landing legs matter. But landing Starship on Mars is a long road ahead, one that's at least 15 years away from becoming reality. On the other hand, Artemis III is just around the corner, NASA's biggest crewed mission since Apollo. That means getting the Starship HLS variant ready as soon as possible. And honestly, Rocket Cargo Vanguard is the perfect chance for SpaceX to fine-tune it, especially with those landing legs that could make history. So, what makes designing landing legs for Starship such a challenge for SpaceX? Imagine Starship HLS touching down on the moon, carrying over 100 tons of cargo. Add in the ship's own weight, plus remaining fuel. And we're talking about a total mass of 150 to 200 tons. That's a lot of weight coming in for landing, and the biggest challenge? The impact force when it hits the surface. Each Raptor engine can produce up to 230 tons of thrust. But during landing, they have to slow the ship down from a few hundred meters per second to zero in just a few seconds. That creates a huge reactive force on the landing legs the moment Starship touches the ground. For example, if it's coming in at 5 meters per second and weighs 150 tons, the impact force could reach hundreds of kilonewtons. In simple terms, the landing legs have to handle all that energy without bending or breaking. The next challenge is that the terrain on the Moon and Mars is nothing like the smooth landing pads Falcon 9 uses. We're talking about craters, large rocks, and loose regolith that could make Starship tilt or sink. That means the landing legs have to handle both shear stress and compressive stress when touching sharp rocks or hard surfaces. For example, a pointed rock could put localized pressure of several megapascals on a landing foot. And if one leg lands in a hole or on uneven ground, the system needs to adjust to prevent Starship from tipping over. We've already seen how critical this is. Back in the SN10 test, some landing legs failed to lock properly, causing the vehicle to tilt and eventually explode. One smart solution is refining how the landing legs deploy and absorb impact. The system could use hydraulics or pneumatics, like Falcon 9, where the legs stay folded against the ship during launch to reduce drag and extend precisely before landing. To prevent failures like SN10's collapsed legs, they would lock securely with a mechanical latch, ensuring stability at touchdown. Servo motors or hydraulic pumps could control deployment, improving timing and structural integrity. But extending the legs isn't enough. They also need to handle the immense landing forces. A smart shock absorber system using nitrogen gas pistons or hydraulic dampers could soften the impact, stretching the landing force over 0.5 to 1 second to reduce stress. Before SpaceX can hit these ambitious milestones, they first have to tackle the immediate challenges posed by upcoming Starship missions. A robust re-entry system is crucial for a successful landing, whether that's using the Mechazilla arms or traditional landing legs. Starship has to withstand extreme heat and stress during its return, making its heat shield one of the most critical components. Those protective tiles need to perform flawlessly to keep the spacecraft structurally intact through this intense phase. But if Starship can land safely on its legs, does the Mechazilla landing method still matter? The answer is yes, but depending on the mission, sometimes the answer could also be no. First of all, when it comes to missions like launching Starlink satellites, flying to the moon, or even reaching Mars, the Mechazilla landing approach is absolutely essential. One big advantage of catching Starship is the potential for weight savings. Every pound saved on the rocket translates directly into increased payload capacity for orbital missions. In rocket design, weight is everything, which is why companies like SpaceX prioritize weight-saving measures. When considering the possibility of catching super-heavy mid-air, the need for landing legs becomes obsolete. Given super-heavy's massive size, the legs required to support its weight would be substantial. But if SpaceX can successfully catch super-heavy and move it directly onto the launch mount without relying on landing legs, those legs are no longer necessary. This means the booster can allocate that saved weight to carrying even more cargo into orbit and beyond. Another key factor is launch cadence. Starship isn't just about reusability, it's about rapid reusability. 
SpaceX isn't aiming for a rocket that can be reused eventually. They want multiple rockets that can be quickly turned around for the next flight. For example, if Starship is being used to establish a base on the moon, it will need to make numerous trips to transport building materials and infrastructure. The demand for frequent launches and quick recovery makes the launch tower catch system essential. Mechazilla is far from optional. Additionally, if SpaceX masters mid-air catches for both Super Heavy and Starship, the process could be significantly faster. If a booster lands near the launch site using traditional methods, cranes and manual relocation are required, which takes time and could delay the next launch. However, by catching Super Heavy directly and placing it right onto the launch mount, SpaceX can speed up the entire process dramatically. Elon Musk often emphasizes the importance of simplifying complex projects. As he famously put it, the best part is no part. Take Super Heavy's grid fins, for example. They were originally designed to fold, much like Falcon 9's, but SpaceX opted for fixed grid fins instead, simplifying the design and reducing complexity. Similarly, reducing reliance on landing legs follows the same principle. These legs add weight and pose significant engineering challenges, but they remain a necessary backup for certain missions, where catching the booster isn't feasible. For example, in military cargo transport missions around the world, Mechazilla is important as a launch tower, but not for catching Starship. In these cases, Starship would need to land on unprepared surfaces where the catch system isn't an option, making landing legs essential, just like I mentioned at the beginning of the video. To sum it up, landing legs aren't just an upgrade, they're a strategic move. By cutting out complex recovery systems, SpaceX slashes costs and gains an edge in military contracts and lunar missions. More importantly, they unlock new possibilities, like rapid response science drops on asteroids or emergency payload deliveries to orbit. Economically, it's about efficiency. Strategically, it's about flexibility for high-risk missions. And at its core, it all builds on Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy's proven success. With this foundation, SpaceX isn't just outpacing competitors. It's setting the stage for a profitable future and, ultimately, a Mars-ready starship. That's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. See you soon.